Hello everyone, I'm Kim and Aline and today is Tuesday, June 4th. You are now watching the Open, a program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to you. Don't forget to stay connected with us via social media at BronxNet TV. Luxury skincare products are becoming more popular among children and preteens ages 7 to 13. Drawn to the shelves of stores like Sephora and Ulta, tweens and teens are buying a variety of skincare items, including anti-aging creams, moisturizers, and acne serums. Dr. Helen He, a dermatologist for Mount Sinai Health System, joins me to discuss the potential impact of these products on younger skin. Doctor, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Now, this is a really interesting topic, and I'm so excited that, you know, we have you here to talk about this. Uh, but, you know, I want to jump right into it. Why have children and teens become so interested in skincare and preventative skincare health measures? I think a major reason for that is because we are currently in the digital age where information is more readily accessible than ever before. And, of course, social media plays a huge role in this as well. So as a child or a teen, if you see your favorite influencer with absolutely flawless skin, like not a pore to be found on their face, promoting a cream or a serum that they say they use every day and that's the reason their skin looks the way it does, that can be so difficult to resist. Um, and I think that with this type of content becoming almost ubiquitous in the lives of many kids and teens, not to mention influence from other kids in school who might be consuming similar types of content, um, it's really no surprise that kids and teens are developing an interest in skincare. Now, I'm curious to know, uh, why is this sudden interest considered a double-edged sword? I think it's a double-edged sword because on one hand, I love the fact that even my youngest patients are understanding the importance of taking care of their skin early on developing healthy skincare habits, um, like applying sunscreen, for example, will in the long term have benefits on the skin, like reducing the risk of skin cancers. But we're now kind of veering towards another extreme um, where kids and teens now have really complicated skincare regimens, and these may include anti-aging products that are intended uh, for adults. And those are often not only expensive and not useful for this demographic, but can even cause harm. Now, I'm curious to know, do you think that possibly because it's skincare, that's why more parents are maybe a little bit more open to buying these products for their kids? Because I know maybe um, a decade ago or a few years ago even, um, makeup was really big for a lot of children and now it's skincare. So do you think that that could also be the reason why parents um, are more likely to participate you know, in this trend with their kids? Yeah, um, again, I think because there's more information about this and trends kind of come and go just like the makeup trend from a couple of decades ago as well. So I think um, because parents and kids both have more information about skincare and what's out there and more of a curiosity as well, uh, parents may be also um, buying more products for their kids um, because they're also developing an interest. But I think that's where education about what's appropriate for that age group versus what might be potentially harmful is really important. Now, I think this is a great segue to talk about the differences between adult and teen um, skin. And I'm curious to know, are there consequences even more extreme when it comes to kids that are, you know, possibly even in elementary school? Yeah, absolutely. So as as for the first question of the differences between adult and kid skin, they're absolutely not the same because the skin is a dynamic organ that actually changes um, throughout the course of one's lifetime. And as a result, what the skin needs to be healthy also changes. Kids and teens tend to have thinner skin, so that's going to be more sensitive and prone to irritation. And of course, because of puberty, you get huge fluctuations in hormone levels um, that affects every organ of the body, and that includes the skin. So teenagers tend to have more sebaceous, oilier, and acne-prone skin. Um, at Mount Sinai, we've even done studies where we looked at skin biopsies that uh, of kids and teens versus adults, where we show that they're really not the same at all. Um, and yes, the consequences can be more extreme for kids under the age of 12 as well, because the skin progressively increases in thickness throughout childhood. So they have thinner skin that is more prone to uh, irritation and redness. 
and I just want to say thank you so much for educating us on this because I, for one, definitely thought that, um, well, like when I saw products that were marketed to, you know, maybe babies or younger kids, I thought it was just a marketing tactic. I had no idea that there actually were uh, differences in our skin. So thank you so much for educating on, us on that. Now, kids and teens have taken an interest in a lot of luxury skincare products that contain retinol and vitamin C. What do those products do and how are they harmful to younger skin? Right, so retinol and vitamin C are common ingredients with anti-aging and antioxidant properties um, that, uh, um, that, that promote skin turnover and build collagen. Um, and that's why I often recommend them to adult patients who want to build that collagen and improve skin texture and combat some of the, um, some of the signs of skin aging like fine lines, wrinkles, dispigmentation, but kids and teens don't really have these types of issues and they don't really need anti-aging. Um, and if anything, those types of products can actually overstimulate the skin um, and potentially cause harmful effects. Thank you so much for that. Now, uh, what impact are these products currently having on children and tweens who use them? And by the impact, I mean, you know, is it causing children to have acne breakouts or uh, we just talked about hyperpigmentation. Is it actually, you know, doing the reverse effect if they're using these products? Yeah, no, great question. Um, retinol and vitamin C, they're known to be irritating. And given, as I said, kids already have really sensitive skin at baseline, they're more likely to develop the redness, the irritation, um, eczema or contact dermatitis. Um, and if they do develop eczema or contact dermatitis, they're gonna get these red scaly patches that itch and are uncomfortable. And it can even like make the skin more rough to the touch. And in the long run, that can actually lead to premature skin aging um, and wrinkles. And like you said, for hyperpigmentation, especially for patients with darker skin tones, um, these rashes can heal with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation that can take months to resolve. And that's probably exactly the opposite of what kids and teens would want for their skin, really for anyone would want their, to their skin. So um, these products are not only not beneficial for that age group, but can even be counterproductive and harmful. And with that, I would like to also highlight exfoliants. I know that those are also very popular um, amongst all ages, but why might this skincare activity of using an exfoliant be a little bit more harmful to younger skin? So both physical and chemical exfoliants, so think acids like AHAs and BHAs, are by design stripping away at the outer layer of the skin that is really critical for retaining moisture of the skin. And that can leave the skin thinner, irritated, and dry. Um, and exfoliants, moreover, um, as well as retinols, actually, because it thins out the skin, it also leaves the skin more photosensitive and more likely to burn in the sun. And that, um, by making it more sensitive to the sun, can lead to uh, uh, accelerated skin aging, uh, paradoxically, and also can increase the risk for skin cancers. Now, how should parents address this new interest kids have um, in a way that isn't dismissive? And with that also, you know, are there any products that parents can look to that are safe for kids to use? Um, I think, again, the fact that kids are expressing an interest in skincare is actually really a wonderful thing that should be encouraged. I think it may be productive for parents to have conversations with their kids about what exactly are the skincare needs that they want to address? Is it their eczema, is it their acne? Um, and why is it that they want to buy this specific product? Like what makes it so appealing? I think that this could be a great opportunity for kids and their parents to research and learn together about what skincare habits, practices, products are actually helpful for their targeted skin concerns versus what's superfluous and can even be harmful. And I think it's also a good opportunity for parents to teach their kids to critically think about the content they consume um, and really to question or encourage them to question whether they want this product because of its benefits that is backed by scientific evidence or is it because they just saw it in a trendy TikTok video, for example. So that way, with that approach, parents are um, teaching their kids a valuable life lesson 
um, while also um, teaching their kids to think critically and giving them the respect of um, critical and independent thinkers. Now, I'm curious to know, do you think that skincare brands now have this responsibility to possibly even warn parents who buy these products for their children or, you know, just have this responsibility to understand who their audience is? I think that they definitely share in that responsibility. Um, the reality is that while skincare companies may be financially incentivized to make their products appealing to both teens, kids, and adults, um, it would be irresponsible of them to market a product not intended for kids and teens to that demographic. But luckily, I think a lot of major skincare companies are actually moving away from that trend, and some of them are even engaging in anti-marketing campaigns, so to speak, um, where they're actively discouraging their young consumers from buying products with high concentrations of active ingredients. And I think that's an example that um, other companies should follow as well. And I think that's something that would go a long way in establishing trust with their consumer base, especially with parents. Now, elected leaders in California are introducing a bill banning the sale of anti-aging skin products to children under the age of 13. I'd love to know your thoughts on this, and is this something that more states should follow? I think that this is a pretty interesting concept, actually, and I definitely agree with the sentiments behind this bill, and I appreciate that this issue is actually being taken seriously at its state level. I could foresee some people having some concerns or questions about the enforceability of such a bill, as well as the potential ramifications for um, restricting consumer freedom. But, um, and, and also I can, I, I do think putting all of the onus on retailers may not be sufficient, whereas this should really be a shared responsibility mm -hmm. of government, social media platforms, um, parents, dermatologists, really at every level. But I do think this is a great first step in putting forth legislation that aims to safeguard um, our young kids from these harmful effects of anti-aging products. And yes, I do think other states should follow suit in having dialogue um, about what are the most effective strategies to provide education and to promote healthy skin in our young patients. Well, doctor, I want to thank you so much for joining us and really having this interesting and educational um, discussion. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. If you would like to learn more or want to schedule an appointment, please go to the website at mountsinai.org slash care slash dermatology. Don't go away. We'll be back with more open after this.